Could Treasury yields cross 5% or even 6%? And are you crazy for waiting to go long? Hello, members, super savers, and bond course fans. I hope you're healthy and well. Here are the three topics that we'll be covering in this week's Treasury Update video. One, is it crazy to wait until yields cross 5% to go long on Treasuries? This is our community question of the week. I actually answered almost the exact same question in a recent live member Q&A. And given how often we get asked about it, I thought it might be interesting to share my perspective on this with all of you. Two, where did Treasury yields end this past week? And three, what are the yield expectations for the upcoming three-year, 10-year, and 30-year Treasury auctions? As usual, here's our front of video disclaimer. For a detailed disclaimer, please refer to the end of this video. Let's dive in now, folks. We conducted a community poll recently asking you, at what rate would you start loading up, basically buying significant quantities of longer dated treasury notes and bonds in your portfolio, with longer dated defined as anything three years or longer? And an overwhelming majority of you said you would start loading up at 5% or even 6%, and about a third of you are waiting for 7% or more, bringing us to our community question of the week for this video. The question is this, I'm 70, retired, 100% fixed income, meaning cash, treasury bills, CDs, and money market funds. Am I crazy to wait to build a five-year treasury ladder until the one to five-year treasuries hit 5%? Is there a formula for deciding how much to put in each rung? I have 200K currently in a Vanguard money market fund for the ladder, and I'm paralyzed with not knowing how to proceed. And here are my thoughts on this. I don't think it's crazy to wait so long as you're okay with the fact that those treasury maturities may never hit 5% or that it may take longer to hit 5% than you had expected, perhaps much longer. Now, as many of you know, I personally believe that rates could go higher again over time based on our ever-growing budget deficit and political dysfunction. But I don't have a crystal ball either. No one really knows for certain. If we look at the data, the last time that the two-year T-note and the 20-year T-bond crossed 5% at an auction was in October of last year, as we shared in this recent video on dollar cost averaging into Treasury auctions to get the best overall yield, linked below. And if we look at historical data over the past two decades from FRED, the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, the last time the five-year Treasury note was above 5% was more than 17 years ago during the great financial crisis. So for those of you who are in the same boat as this Diamond Nest Egg member here and wondering whether you should wait before going long, my question to you is this, what's your alternative if rates don't hit 5%? For us personally, given our age and stage of life, our alternative would be to either just stick with the money market fund and wait, or maybe move a fair bit of our fixed income portfolio back into equities, or perhaps consider something like a dividend fund as well. With full recognition that by doing this, we would lose these three C's of clarity, control, and cost that we talk about so often on this channel as the key advantages for holding individual bonds to maturity. Do drop a comment below and let the community know what your alternative would be. Now, if I were in my 60s or 70s though, as I told our super super saver member who asked this question, I would most likely start dollar cost averaging some of this $200,000 from the Vanguard Money Market Fund into a treasury ladder for the sleep well at night and not having to worry about timing of volatile bond market factors or possibly even looking at building a ladder with investment grade corporates if I wanted a slightly higher yield and was okay with a little bit of added risk. Practically, that could mean setting an investment schedule for myself and starting to invest now in smaller but regular amounts. For example, I could be buying $1,000 or more of new issue, one year, two year, three year, four year, and five year treasury notes at every auction, and maybe, look for some regular schedule for investing in corporate bonds as well. This approach would also give me the advantage of knowing that between years one and five, I will have regular larger sums of principal repayments at my disposal to spend 
and or reinvest when these bonds mature. I would nonetheless not invest all my liquidity, but still leave some cash in the money market fund. It's always nice to have a bit of dry powder on the side, earning 5% plus in case other market opportunities come up and or bond yields go higher. But that's me in my hypothetical 60s and 70s, which brings me to the second part of this question. Unfortunately, there is no formula as your latter will depend on your individual circumstances. It would make sense though to go through your budget to see what your income needs are and how the interest payments and principal repayment from your bonds factor into those income needs. As I always say, everyone's financial journey is different. And from what I understand, the Diamond Nest Egg member who asked this question did decide to leave his or her money sitting in Vanguard's money market fund and wait for 5%. So with that in mind, I'm sure he or she, as well as those of you watching this video, will be interested in moving on to the next section of this video. As we so often do at the end of a week, let's compare treasury yields from this past Friday versus the previous week. Here we have all the maturities of the treasury issues at auction. Here's where yields stood this past Friday, and here's where yields stood at the end of the previous week. Yields on the very short end were mostly up while everything one year and above ended down for the week. This was due to a number of factors. First, while the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BLS, did show 206,000 jobs added in June, which was a bit more than the 200,000 that the market had expected, this was overshadowed by the fact that job growth numbers from the previous months were revised downwards. Second, the BLS reported that the unemployment rate inched up slightly to 4.1% in June. Third, the Institute of Supply Management Services Index showed its lowest reading in over four years. All three of these factors point towards a slowing economy and labor market, raising hopes of a Fed rate cut sooner rather than later. Relative to the beginning of 2024, bond yields are nearly all still up, as you can see from this table, comparing Treasury yields from this past Friday versus January 2nd. This row shows the increase or decrease in rates since the beginning of this year to the time of this taping. Increases in rates are shown in black and decreases in rates are shown in red. The one month and two month maturities are still down with the two month T-bill nearly break even for the year at the time of this taping and the three month T-bill unchanged. Overall though, rates continue to be higher across all the other maturities, especially on the medium and longer end of the maturity spectrum. You can find more details on these rates for any day of the week that the bond market is open on the Treasury's Resource Center website here. All sources are linked below in the first pinned comment. So that was a recap of bond yields from last week. Now let's take a look at the upcoming week's auctions. Here we are at Treasury Direct's upcoming auctions page. If we scroll down, we can see that all the weekly T-bill and CMB auctions are happening as usual. The 52-week T-bill will also be auctioned off on July 9th. And if we scroll down further, we can see the 3-year T-note, the 9-year and 10-month T-note, and the 29-year and 10-month T-bond will be auctioned off as well this upcoming week. The 3-year T-note is not a reopening auction, so the coupon still remains to be determined on auction day. The 9-year and 10-month T-note and the 29-year and 10-month T-bond are reopening auctions, so we already know what the coupons will be on those. At the time of this taping, here's what the coupon and the expected yield are for the 3-year T-note auction on Fidelity's platform. And here's what the coupon and the expected yield are for the 9-year and 10-month T-note auction. And here's what the coupon and the expected yield are for the 29-year and 10-month T-bond auction. Do keep in mind that these numbers can and usually do change all the way up to the time of the auction. And in particular for the 29-year and 10-month T-bond, because this auction will take place only after the BLS releases the next inflation report, the next CPI data, on that same day. So, who in our community is buying this week? Drop us a comment below and let everyone know. And if you're newer to the world of treasuries, or if you're ready to really learn the nitty gritty about bond investing and building a bond portfolio, do note that our July 4th sale is up and running for a few more hours.
The coupon code SUMMER2024 is valid through Sunday, July 7th, 2024 at midnight Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Pacific Time. Use it to get 10% off Bond Beginners, Bond Masters, as well as our Bond Course Bundle. This is the most popular choice amongst our Diamond Nestic Bond fans at the moment. And yes, that's 10% off on top of this $80 savings when you buy both courses together. Plus, you'll be joining just in time for a second quarter Bomb Beginners live online course session on Monday, July 8th at 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time, 2.45 p.m. Pacific Time, where we'll be talking about all things fixed income. Take advantage of Bond yields while they're attractive and check out the links below this video for more details on our Bond courses. And don't forget... Your purchase is risk-free with our seven-day refund policy. All right, members, super savers, and bond course fans, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Good luck to everyone who's planning on buying at the upcoming week's auctions, and see you again very soon with more brand new wealth-building content for your financial journey.